day. Thank you, Arunji. Reverend Swamiji, Acharyas, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, organizers of the 25th Mahasamelan. I thank you and I welcome you to be here on behalf of that executive body. If I, if I remember well, maybe I'm the only member I've seen at this time. Everybody's working so hard behind the scene. My little topic here today is unity among Arya Samaj. Unity among Arya Samaj. You know, this philosophy, Vedic philosophy, which the Arya Samaj, we all propagate, its foundation is on unity. And I would highlight a couple of points why the foundation is unity. Whoever, wherever we come from, whether in India, Europe, North America, South America, wherever an Arya Samaj unit exists, wherever that group exists, we subscribe to these values. And these are the values, based on these values, unity, Rig Veda, Sangatam Soup. Every week, in every temple, in every Arya Samaj organization, we utter these prayers. Om Samgacha Dwam, Samadwadwam, Samom Anansi Janatam, Devabhagam Yatapurve, Sam Janana Upasate. And we pray, O oh God, may we assemble and march forward with a common purpose. May we confer with each other with open minds and work together harmoniously for common good. May we pool our thoughts for integrated wisdom and higher ideals like our ancestors who achieved high eminence and fortune from unity. And in the last mantra we pray, Om Samani Wa Akuti Samana Hirdayani Wa Samana Mastu Womano Yatawaha Suhasati. Meaning may our aspiration be perfectly harmonious. May absolute accord reign in our minds. May we share our fortunes and reduce disparity so that we can be bonded in fellowship and unity. The 10 principles of the Arya Samaj. The first five, you know, it tells us that, you know, it sets a framework for one goal that in life. It reminds us of our obedience to God, who through the Vedas will bestow upon us wisdom and, and truthfulness to obey the laws of righteousness, dharma. And the last five principles, you know, establish universal principles and values that everyone craves. Education and knowledge help to dispel ignorance and bring about love and justice in one daily, daily dealings with their fellow human beings. The mission of the Arya Samaj, Krinvanto Vishwam Aryam. Each one of us, we make ourselves better. We make ourselves better. By making ourselves better on a daily basis, this world becomes better. Every little thing that we do to transform our individual individuality would make this world better. And that's the mission of each one of us who subscribe to the Arya Samaj. We have an obligation, one of the principles, to promote the true knowledge of the Vedas. The writings of Maharishi Swami Dayanand, from the Satyak Prakash to the Rig Ved Basha Bhumika, the Sanskar Vidhi, the Arya Bhivanaya, and all his writings give us a common guideline where we as individuals, we should be united. But does this happen? There are several reasons why, even though this foundation should be primarily among us, it's not. And it has to deal primarily with individuals. From the very beginning, from the very beginning, people individually think, I know what is the right way. 
And this, when you think it's the right way, some people do not want to compromise. They become egoistic, they become powerful. When this happens, that unity and accord that we're seeking dissipates. And sooner what happens, we segregate. Some go on there, some go on there. Because there is, there will be differences in promoting this vision of the Arya Samaj. Different people will have different ideas, but we need to respect that. You know, the 1910 principle, the Arya Samaj recognized that there would have been that differences. And they put in place the 1910 principle, which simply says that no one should be com content with promoting his own good only. On the contrary, he should look for his good in promoting the good of all. And the prin 10 principle requires that all men should subordinate themselves to the laws of society calculated to promote the well-being of all. And it gives you a choice on your individual basis. But when, when the Arya Samaj initially, they were putting these rules together, Swami Dayanand realized that, you know, differences would be happening when Swami Dayanand was establishing this movement. He was such a charismatic leader that there was not reason for disunity. The branches were being set up, putting in motion to bring about these goals into full operation. But today in Arya Samaj, because all of these divisions that we have, whether we're in Guyana, I can give you an example. We had like, we had one, one central American Aryan League because of some differences, we had the Arya Pratinidhi Sabha and we had the American Aryan League. So there was a split. And from that, what happened, you know, it's like you have diver diversion within a community. And I'm, I'm sure from my readings all over this world, whether it's India, whether it's in South Africa, whether it's all over the world, there is division and there is segregation between, between us. But today, today we do not have charismatic leaders that would propagate all of us to follow that person. So that, that is one reason for lack of unity. And there is another reason where we find an individual organization, when the, an Arsamaj unit is, is set up, they do not want to merge or to congregate or to join with another organization. Because there is a feeling, I want to be the powerhouse in this organization. And by joining or merging here, that power is not established. So we need to recognize, from the very beginning, we had little divisions between, from Swami Sradhanand and Mahatma Hansraj, um, Ra Hansrajji. And the early inception, there was a separation in how did the mission should be going forward. But in, in that aspect, both of them going di you know, in different ways or different beliefs, whatever it is, it still propagate this imagine the direction. Both were, were you know, so there were individual differences, but both were still growth oriented. There is a failure, and there are exceptions to this. But there is a tremendous failure for Arya Samaj to involve the individual members who come into the doors of these organizations into the activities of the Arya Samaj. And I'm saying there may be exception. But what is necessary, because we cannot, we cannot grasp the, the power of the people. We do not know the abilities of the people who are here. We find we have some organization that actually that, um, the people are there. There is a problem, big problem. The Irish Samaj, we lack a program that can be universally accepted by all Irish Samaj. There is not a common goal, whether you're in India, whether you're in South America, whether in the United States of America or in the Caribbean. We do not have something that we can say, you know what, whether it's a weekend or it's a week. The Arya Samaj, which was noted for bringing about social change and bringing about, you know, making change in people's life, we do not have anything that we as a people, we as a group can say, we do this on this weekend or in this week. So there is disparity, there is no commonality. And these are things where which if you want unity, if you want the Samaj to continue to grow, these are some of the things one needs to look up. 
And then we, we have definitely there is a failure to keep up with the changing environment. The social problems of yesteryear, what we faced in India, which was so tremendous and so bad, and the Arasamaj was the primary movement that bring about those changes. In today's world, those changes are no longer existing. There are different problems. And we have to get involved in those problems. Things like alcoholic issue, drug abuse, domestic violence, poverty issue, elderly care, visiting sick and disabled people. You know, we be like, I'm second generation, Arya Samaj. My grandparents came from India, my, grand, my mother. But it, there is, I, when people are young, they contributed. People who came to the Arya Samaj, they came and they had a vision and they had a purpose. Those people today, when they're getting old, nobody wants to see them. Nobody wants to visit them. We as a group, we need to look at that. So what do we need to promote unity among Arya Samaj? You know, family prayers. Om Anufrate, Pito Putro, Matra Bhavatu Samnaha, Jaya Pate Madhumatim, Vachan Vadatu Shantiwam. From the very beginning, we're talking at a family unit. We're talking of the family, we don't want let the children be obedient to the mother, to their father, and be of the same mind as the mother. May the husband and wife speak sweetly to each other to maintain peace in the household. So we're talking about unity from the individual family. But the most important thing that we need to realize is that unity is not an easy concept. We need to make sure that our leaders, leaders, they must practice what they preach. They must have true faith in God and practice dharmic action because the ordinary people look up to the leaders, look up for guidance, success, and peace in their lives. And when our leaders do not look up to this expectation. They don't live their life to that expectation. People become disappointed. And eventually, they would lose faith in the Arya Samaj. Everyone who is a member of an Arya Samaj organization, they need to ensure that they are aware of the writings of Maharishi Swami Dayanand. This will provide an education and an enlightenment for the promotion of Vedic knowledge within the community world in which we, which we live. You know, there's one thing I go around, I go around to all these Samaelans and I see everybody making selection of um, verses from the Vedas. And Maharishi Swami Dayanand wrote the Arya Bhivanaya, which has 108 mantras. And he said, this book here is for your prayer, your peace, and your happiness. And that book, it's not promoted. So everybody, if we look at the source, we can still find things that are meaningful and would bring unity. As Aryans, as Arya Samaj, we need to make sure our children are equipped with the wisdom of the Vedas, as promoted by the rishis and the munis and the sages. They need to recognize we need to educate our children about the, the struggles of Maharishi Swami Dayanand, Swami Sradhanan, Mahatma Hansra, and all the heroes. We should make sure that our children know the sacrifices of our grandparents, our parents, for Arya Samaj. We, I myself, I mean, I subscribe because what my grandparents, the struggle that they went through. Because from Orthodox Hinduism into our Samaj, what not an easy place. But when you tell your children and you and, and to tell them that look, this is what you, the generations before you went through, you can inspire them to commit themselves to this wonderful mission. It gives them a purpose in life to make a tremendous change. We got a big, the biggest problem our Samaj feel, you know, has. We cannot even convince our own children, our own children to follow in our beliefs. And that is a big problem because today, especially 
in the United States of America, I can tell you, we're hardly bringing in new people into the fold. So there, there is an issue there. So we need to really encourage. There are a few examples. Who knows the teacher to the children? This Houston Arsamaj may be an exception, and I want to say that, where there is teaching, so there is, but in a lot of Arsamaj, this, we need to document the skills. Arsamaj, every organization need to document the skills of each and every single member that enters the door into, the, into their Samaj. So then this, this skill set can be disseminate, disseminated to, to draw up programs that we can carry out within the community. And if every IR Samaj has that skill set, we can then move around internationally, globally within the country to have that skill set as a database to promote the mission of IR Samaj. And um, we need to recognize that in, in any organization, people, human resource is the most important asset. Every single unit, whether it's the family, the village, the country, a business unit, people create and make things happen. And even in the smallest of those units, conflicts will occur. And we need, as the organization grows bigger, it escalates. We, as a people, we need to manage those conflicts. Vedic philosophy gives us the tool to manage these issues and to promote compromise and unity. In any organization, differences, criticism is inevitable. However, we must recognize that criticism is not opposition, and opposition is not rejection. Even within the individual self, there is self-criticism. It's natural and it's useful. We have to recognize our human limit limitation and to maintain and sustain self-confidence and faith to keep up the cooperation and move on. Arya Samajis, all of us who are here, you know, we're dedicated people and we exist all over the world. As individuals, we are dedicated to the promotion of righteousness, knowledge, peace, and happiness. And surely, we can make unity the primary goal of the Irish Samaj. We can put a couple of things into place. We can do a little bit change. Om Sahanao Bhavatu, Sahanao Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karvavahai, Te Jasvina Vadhita Mastu, Ma Vivhi Vishavahai. O Lord, protect and enable us to help and serve each other with love. May we enjoy the sweet fruit of this earth. May we attain to spiritual and mental strength together. May our learning and knowledge through the grace of through your grace, make our life glorious and, prog and, and gorgeous. And may we be bear no ill towards each other. Let peace and peace reign everywhere. Om Shantihi, Shantihi, Shantihi. <laughs> and in this mantra, in every single Irish Samaj, it's been chanted every single week. Let us put into practice what we preach. We, as, as a people, we have the abilities, we have the potential, we need to put it together. Thank you and namaste.